Good day, my name is Joe, and today I'll be going over a little bit how to set up and how to play and a few of the concepts for Race Formula 90. This is a Formula One game uh, that's based in, well, about the 90s. Uh, you will have to manage your tires, uh, refuel, do, do a few other things. Hopefully at the, uh, at the end of the race, you know, after a certain amount of turns, you're ahead and you win. So let's see a little bit more how to set up the game. So the first thing you're going to do in the game is determine how many players you're going to have and that will determine how many cars. So in this case, we'll just show one board. But we're going to have two human players and so therefore we have two super fast cars, three fast and three, well, very slow cars. So <laughs> the first thing we're going to do is choose a driver skill. Now these driver skills uh, will stay with you the entire race and they give you just special perks that you'll have as a driver. The next thing you're going to do is set up the damage bag and in the bag you're going to have a mix of brown and and red chips. These are going to represent uh, different levels of damage. Brown is going to be permanent damage where red is going to be temporary damage. So in a two player game, you put 18 red discs and six brown discs in the bag. So once you've chosen your driver skill, in this case, I'm gonna get lapping because uh, hopefully I'll be able to lap people easier. Once you got your driver skill set, you're gonna have six points to actually set up your car in free practice. Uh, this will let you go up or down on some damage, depend, uh, let you draw more or less cards, and kind of gives you that starting tire that you're gonna start off with. If you don't wanna mess with this right now, if this is your first game, you can keep everything normal and have two of each one of those three. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to look at our tires down here, which is in the uh, the bottom right of the setup, and we're going to put that many tire tokens uh, down here in the setup. All right, next we're going to drop to our hand size. So we have a hand size of six, and then we get one extra card. At this point, we can look to see what kind of cards we have, and if we like our hand, we can keep it. If we don't, we can draw all new cards, but you got to keep that hand. All right, free practice is done, and now you can go into qualifying. So you're gonna to wanna to play one card, probably higher, uh, because this is gonna determine your place in qualifying. So you put one card face down, you're gonna be hiding this card, and you're gonna use one of, your, one of your refueling chips. Now these chips on one side are gonna say, it's gonna either have a plus or minus number, and then a pit. So whatever you choose here, you're going to add to your face down card. And this is going to be the lap that you pit on. So in this case, we may want to put down a three, a plus three down here and maybe just a plus one so we can pit on lap 10. So every person's going to do that independently and secretly. Once everybody's ready, you flip it over and it's going to determine qualifying. So in this case, we have a four total, so three from the card, one from the refueling chip, and we're at a 34. So we're gonna put this at the four spot. Like I said, the total number is four. And then you draw one for every bot in play and basically do the same for them. So the higher the number, the better the starting position. So once we finish, um, the lower number will start earlier. And when I say lower, the lower number in the bottom right of yours, which are also on the bot chips themselves. So once all is uh, said and done, uh, setting up the placement, then you actually put the cars themselves, starting from the top and working your way down. So in this case, we have two uh, fast cars, followed by a super fast car, followed by a purple, a fast, then we get to go another super fast, purple, and the purple. Let's just say for this sake, the other player went dead last. So now that the qualifying grid is all set, uh, you, don't need on, you don't need these on these uh, board anymore. However, these will now be transferred and be put exactly where they say they're going to pit onto the board. The card that you played now becomes your target check card. And to start the race, 
you'll draw one extra card. Do the weather. In this case, we're not going to do the weather. And then you're going to choose your tire. Uh, so if it's a dry race, I suggest choosing the soft or hard tire. And if it's a, uh, a wet or intermediate race, obviously choose one of those. In this case, we are going to start off with the hard tire. So you'll put the hard tire in your tire spot. Now, if we did choose the soft, we would have to give up three tires. However, we would get these extra blue uh, tire tokens. Uh, by doing this, by choosing the hard, we're able to grab a track card. Now, these track cards have these special backs on them, uh, according to what track you're playing. And the last thing we're going to do is pick our strategy. This is the strategy that can change throughout the race, mainly changes on a pit stop. However, some other circumstances allow you to change these. But for the first third or half of the race, this is what you're really going to be focusing on. In this case, we'll choose balance. So now we're ready to start the race. So lights out and away we go. So we have our track cards, which are track specific. And then we're going to have our race cards. Now these are what we're going to play to to move around the board. However, whoever is in first place, the leader, is going to go first. Now earlier we had we placed all these refuel chips over there. The bots are going to refuel one time uh, throughout the race. And there's a pit number on every board. When they pit, you have to move back that many spaces. The bots will only pit one time. Uh, however, the player may need to pit more because you can only fill up uh, 10 turns worth of fuel for every pit stop. Unless you move backwards an extra one or two to fill up 13 or 16 for putting more fuel in the car. So we're all ready to go. And the bots are pretty simple movement. And the beginning of the race is a little bit different from the other turns. But the bots are very easy to move as the yellow bots are going to move three. So they're just going to move three spaces. Now, when we get to the, the black, the super fast bots, they're going to be moving four. Now, when the bots move, you can see nothing really happened, nothing changed. You're, you can, the bots can pass each other. They don't spend movements going through other bots. Once black had passed the fast bot, the leader is now going to change. We're not going to worry about the trajectories on the board right now, because right now nobody's landed on it. However, purple's going to go next and purple's going to move two. So we had black move four. All the yellow bots are going to move three and purple, the slow bots are going to move two. Now, when they land on a space, they will try to go to the highest numbered uh, trajectory, not extreme trajectory, which is the diamond, but just the regular. So on the bots next turn, they automatically pass any of these trajectory spaces and it'll get to move two. The last bot to go before we get to go is uh, this yellow. So it'll go one, two, three. It'll take up this second trajectory spot. So it kind of kind of blocked us in a little bit. Uh, then it is our turn. And our turns, well, this is where the, the magic may happen. We get to draw a card. You always draw a card at the beginning of your turn. And then you get to play cards. You can play one card or you can play two cards that match each other or a card and a one. In this case, since turn one is so crucial, as everybody, you know, who really is into Formula One, everybody knows the start, very crucial. We want to get a good start because after this turn, we're going to, you can really get stuck in some of these corners. So to pass a car on the first turn, we'll take one movement point. So if we wanted to move one, two, three, and then right behind this yellow car, we would stop at three. And if we had four movement points, we could stop in between them. Five would put us ahead of the purple and six would finally put us in this corner. Now, I don't know if that's the, the place we really want to end up, but we may not really have a choice. And like I said, you know, we don't have, we do have a double four. However, one of these is a track card and we can only use this in the track. 
uh, provided. So let's say for this sake, we want to play this four. It's this card that's only that's going to take us three wheels to play. So we are going to have to spend some of our tires as we play these cards. So if we want to play this four, it'll cost us three tires. Now we could discard one of these other cards in our hand instead to pay one less tire. But we always have to play at least one tire, or pay at least one. So if we want to go one, two, three, four, we would start ahead of yellow. And we'd be between yellow and purple. This isn't really exactly where we want to be, but this is, we're, we're kind of stuck in it. We didn't have the best qualifying, so we're stuck in this position for now. Now would be a really good time to explain the different parts of the track. So in Race Formula 90, there are three track parts. It could either be a straightaway, which is uh, in the brown. It could be a gray area, which is a braking zone. So usually maybe a late break, you know, you can really try to push it to the limit and go to the next, the next spot or a corner. Now corners are very hard to pass as you guys know. So that's all represented in this movement section at the top of your board. So say we did end up here, we can do the rest of the movements for, um, for the rest of the gang, two, three, four, black Linda behind. Now let's say our partner got a, uh, got a very bad result and just had to sit behind, had to sit behind the car. So that's the end of the turn. So we would go from the leader and then it, it proceeds to go backwards for the turns. Once we go to the next turn, we do the exact same thing. The leader is the one who starts, who starts off the playing and goes forth. Now, on a corner, we would be able to challenge and kind of fight. However, we're in a braking zone, which means, unfortunately, no extra passing at this time for us. No jostling for position. We're just stuck between this yellow and this purple car. So we have our handful of cards still. We can't challenge anything, which is usually the, the start turn declarations. So we're going to just start from the black car. This super fast car is going to go four. And remember, they, the bots try to end their movement on a trajectory. Now, the bots automatically get this trajectory where the players have to potentially spend cards to be able to move that amount of extra space. The card has to match the color of the trajectory landed. So if we go through these three, pretty straightforward on these. Uh, yellow is just going to move three. The next yellow is going to move three. And once again, we're activating from leader all the way to the end. And black is going to go four. Now the robots can pass each other with no penalty at all which is good for them, kind of bad for us. Because now you look at purple, purple's on this two trajectory uh, over here. So they're going to be able to move four. So it's normal movement is two plus an extra two from the trajectory. So one, two, three, four, it's going to end up right behind. Now we're going to go and we're kind of in a pickle because on this corner, they're going three wide. This isn't exactly where we want to be. However, we can maybe challenge next turn. Uh, so let's say we really want to, we really want to try to end up and it's our turn. We're trying to decide what to play. First thing we're going to do is draw our card. And it's a, it's a two. So we don't have any fours in our hand that aren't a track card. So we remember we can't play the track card unless we're in that portion of the track. But what we do have are a pair of twos. So a pair of twos would let us move four. Now, before we do our activation, you do have to pay uh, for any uh, payment of the card itself. 
In this case, it'll be paying a tire and then doing a check. So the checks in this game are a crucial part of the game and require a lot of planning. If you see a number in a, in a diamond box, if it's white, that means it is a normal check. If it's black, that means it is a blind check. So earlier we had our card placed down here and now our check number is 34. So to pass a check, we need to get 34 or less on top of this card. Now there's several ways we could do that. So this plus two is a blind or is a is a check uh, with the even number. So it has to be 34 or less. Some of these checks on some of these cards may have a plus or minus number in them to make the check either harder or easier to pass. Our options are to put one of these cards on top to pass or fail the check, play one of the cards in hand right on top of the card or do a blind check and play on top of the, of the deck itself. So in this case, um, when you fail a check on a card, you would get an engine penalty or a, a damage penalty. So let's say in this case, you know, a 34, we have better checks that we want to do later. We would just put this on top. So a 66 on top of a 34, that would be a fail. So what we're going to do is draw a damaged chip because we failed uh, the chip or the uh, the test. Sorry, and we're going to draw this. Well, this chip it may be red or brown, determining the uh, what type of of damage we have on the car. Red all go away during the pit stops, and brown are permanent damage. So, for these checks around the board, there may be an extreme trajectory on the board where you do a test. And usually these are outlined on the board itself. There's also late breaking checks, but anytime you see a diamond really refers to the check that you're going to make. So in this case, we're going to keep on going. We got a four for our movement. So we're going to go one, two, three, four. That's going to stack us behind all of these other cars. So our, our turn is done. We've played our cards. We discard our cards. Yellow is going to move four. An extra one because of the trajectory so it moves three plus one one two three four and we have a lot of people a lot of robots lined up in the corner the slow bots are going to move two two and remember the bots try to take up any circular trajectory that's on the on the racetrack and let's say pink is just kind of stuck here in the back but let's say we were pink Let's talk a second about doing a blind check, maybe in a late breaking zone. If you see LB, you're trying to do a late breaking zone. So if pink uh, starts or uh, ends their movement here, they can try a late break. And uh, there's this black triangle or a black uh, diamond on the board. So that means it's going to be a blind draw. Say this board was pinks, we'd have to get a 66 or less because that is now the, the check for it. We would draw the card, and in this case, it's a 60, so we pass. Since we pass, we get to move one space forward, still behind the car in front, but we got that free space, then we, could, we overtook a car. If we failed, there's some conditions on the track that may be a little bit too much for this video to explain, but more or less, it's more checks to see, did your car spin out? Did a safety car come out because, you know, somebody crashed? So the bots will never late break and they'll never do extreme trajectories unless a player has an orange flag, which I'll skip that for now. All right, so we've all moved and it's back to the leader. So what do we do? We advance the turn. There's going to be, then we do any, any checks, any corner checks, and we decide if anybody wants to challenge somebody for a spot. And you can bet your bottom dollar we want a challenge. Look at this. We could pass three extra cars or we could really, you know, kind of get the shaft. So to do a challenge on a corner, that's the very first step is declare any challenges for these corners. So there are two corners that can be challenged, but we will really focus on this white car for now. So what happens is 
The bots will always challenge a human player and the human player can decide if they want to concede. If we conceded, we would have to unfortunately move to the back and the other four cars would be able to move first. So we're really going to we're really going to try to challenge. How a challenge works is every all the bots are going to draw two cards each and we'll be able to play two cards from our hand uh, adding together two of the two of the numbers in the upper upper right. Now, the cards we choose will not be able to be played for the rest of the turn. They're not lost, we just can't play them the rest of the turn. So in this case, uh, let's say let's say we wanted to play we want to we want to really try to pass and we want to play a a 6 total. Well, then we reveal each one of the cards. Now, what makes some of these turns difficult and what I do think the, the designer did a great job is there's these these card numbers around some of these turns that really they make some turns more difficult than others in other corners to pass on. So in this case, this turn is a minus four. So everyone gets minus four to their check except for the leader. Whoever's in front has that advantage on this corner. Now, if we're going to pass uh, on corner elf, whoever is in, whoever is behind the leader is going to get plus two. So that's a very easy corner to pass on. After this long straight, you got a, a passing zone right there. So we're going to draw, uh, what is it, four sets now. This will be for the, the first person, the second robot, third robot, and the fourth. So the first robot, uh, I know it's a little bit it's a little bit bright up here, but the first robot did get a three. The second robot got a five. Next robot got a four, and next robot got a five. So first robot got a three. Well, we got a six. However, we had to subtract four, so we're still at a two. So we had three, two, and then a one, one and a zero. So I should have kept the order a little bit tighter, but we're going to have, we're going to, you, you line up in the order that you drew the cards, uh, the order downwards. So the leader is going to stay in front, then it'll go us, and then it'll go the, the two fives. Uh, I forgot which ones, apologize. Let's just keep the same order for the rest. So these cards won't be able to be used by me the rest of the turn and the other cards are going to get discarded but cornering is a good way at the beginning to really really amp up and try to get those positions else you can't pass on a corner so it's very it's kind of it's it's really tough and really positioning matters a lot uh let's say uh pink let's just draw some couple random cards for them pink does want to pass they would draw a four and the robot would draw a six. Well, they tied, so nobody moves. However, since they tied in a challenge, they're gonna both take a damage. The bots don't take a damage, but the human player will. So if you tie in a challenge, nothing happens, but you may take some damage. So we're gonna keep on going, just uh, real quick here. Remember, bots are gonna use trajectories. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Because it's a black bot, it moves four. Uh, so this one will move five, because it was on a trajectory. One, two, three, four, five. And it will end on a trajectory. Uh, the next bot will move, one, two, three, and end on a trajectory. And now that's really bad for us, because we cannot overtake this car in a corner. As you can see at the at the top of your player board, you can see what kind of corners and breaking points and straights that you can pass other robots and other cars. But in a corner, the most we'd be able to go is three. So let's say we went the maximum of three after we drew our card, of course. The others follow around. Purple only moves two. However, the bots can pass each other very easily. Say this one moves up. Nope, this one won't move up. So 
you keep on going around um, and then once the turn marker hopefully you have enough uh, tire chips once the turn marker gets to uh, these refuel chips a bot is going to pit so it eight we have two bots that are going to pit one is going to be a purple one is going to be a yellow so the the most furthest along yellow bot is going to pit so they go back a number of spaces according to the board Now, if a player was going to pit, they would do the exact same thing. So I would move back seven on the board. I would get to get all my tire chips back. I would choose cards in my hand that I don't want anymore and then draw back up to that number before it is my turn again. Get rid of all my damage uh, red tokens that I have. Remember, you got to keep your brown tokens. Those are permanent damage. And you can also change change your strategy for the race if you want to start to conserve tires and um, when it is your turn to refuel remember a human player will refuel an extra 10 plus if they go back an extra space it'll be three they can fuel up to a maximum of 16. so in this case if i refuel at lap 10 I'll have to refuel again anyway at lap 26. So it's a good trade-off on you know how long you really take to pit or not, and do you want to save some tires? So a really a really neat balance in there. There's a few extra concepts I do want to cover. So say this is the board state, which is kind of what it was, minus uh, this black car over here is the leader. So they would go first. Remember the super fast car is going to move four one two three four it has now lapped these two cars so what we're going to do is put a lap token under there now normally you would go from you know back to front well now these are lapped however they're going to be the next ones to go so this car is going to move three one two however it does not pass the leader there are a couple situations where a car would be able to unlap itself but in this case it's going to stop right behind the leader. This car will move two, and then the next car to go would be this black one, followed by me and the two fast bots. So lapping is, uh, just think of it as they're, they're trying to get out of the way, and, you know, they're not really going to fight too much. So bear with me as we do a couple more hypotheticals, because this may come into play more often than you think because your car may be pretty fast and unfortunately for these purple cars they're pretty slow so say you wanted to pass these cars you're the leader so you have the leader token under you everybody's behind you you're coming up on this lap traffic let's say we did not have lapping is our skill so if you look at the top of the board to lap on a straight would be one extra movement point so if you have purple one space in front of you and yellow one space in front of that to lap the car you would have to spend two movement points to get ahead of purple so it'd be one just to move into the space which is on the card and two to move ahead of them to lap them however if a human player is the leader they're gonna have to make a check it's a it's a white numbered normal check to try to pass the leader so you really want to make sure as you're coming up on a card, if you play a movement of five uh, right here, you know, you're going to have to pass these two cars. So that's one, then you'll have to make a test. And remember for the test, you can either play the card that you played face up, play something in your hand on top of the check or blind. So if you did pass the check, you could successfully move past them. So once again, that'd be two movement three to go to the next spot since this is a straightaway by the way and then one to try to pass this one again now as you pass these they do need to have a lap token under them and so you have to do the same check again if you fail for any reason to pass the car well unfortunately you didn't pass them and uh, you're stuck behind them then it, remember it will go to the car the next car will go is this lapped car However, they will not pass you. Then it would go black, black, 
yellow, yellow, these cars, and then yellow would still get to go. If you were able to pass yellow, they would get a lap token and they wouldn't unlap themselves. This would be a very good situation to be in so you have some clean air. You really want to try to, to lap, you know, on a straightaway because a corner does take you a little bit more movement points to lap a car. So I hope this video wasn't too long. I may do a playthrough in the future, but if you do have any questions, let me know. Uh, this is was definitely just kind of a, a hands-on showing of some of the mechanics. Uh, the rule book will take you a little bit just to kind of get used to, but I would play without the weather. I'd play without any flags uh, to begin with. Uh, some of the flags are going to slow you down. Some make lapping easier. Some, uh, the orange flag lets cars, if they land on an extreme trajectory, you can make them do it. Um, or a late braking to try to bring out that safety car if you're a little bit behind. And, uh, which I've never seen a safety car yet, but we'll, uh, hopefully we'll get there one day. And then a green flag can remove some of these yellow flags. So, there's a lot of variants to play with. Uh, there's a lot of things in the game. I would definitely take your time and and reference some of the book where you can, but hopefully you got a good idea of at least how to set up, how to get started, and how the first maybe couple turns worked. So hope you guys uh, have a great day. And like I said, uh, leave any comments below. And until next time.